Hi there, welcome back. Well, before I actually start uh, this, uh, what I had planned for this section, I want to address something that happened as a result of the last video. It has to do with a couple of comments that I got. And the question was, why did that resistor burn out? Now it shouldn't have. The maximum current that would go through there would never have burnt that out normally. But um, it got me thinking and also somebody mentioned, in fact, two people mentioned the, the, to check the fuse. The only reason that resistor would have burnt out is if the fuse failed to do its job. Because the fuse is a 160 milliamp fuse. And even if you had the maximum 160 milliamps through there, it would never have done that to that resistor. So I checked. And this is what I found. The digits are there. The decimal place is in the wrong bloody place. Somebody put a 1.6 amp fuse instead of 160 milliamps. Now that would definitely do it. <laughs> that would definitely do it. So anyway, that's been replaced. And it just taught me a lesson. Never trust something just because it looks okay and it measures okay. You can't really measure whether a fuse is uh, rated correctly. And I should know better. Thanks a lot for that comment and thanks for the tip. Now, one other thing. The extra volt on that uh, 15 volt supply, it was suggested that perhaps the Xena had gone out of spec. Well, that's what we're going to look at next. Now the Xena diode that we have in there has obviously been changed as well. I didn't even pay much attention to that at first, but it's sticking up in the air and um, I don't think that's how it came out of the factory. So somebody changed that out. And that could also be an indication as to why this thing blew up. But I want to switch this on and we'll see what voltage drop we've got across that Xena. So everything's set. Little brother is uh, connected across the Xena. Let's give it the dim bulb and... Okay. 12.7, 12.9. And it just keeps on going up. Well, we're almost a volt and a half, 1.3 volts above its rating. Now that would certainly give us an extra volt on the output. So that's got to be replaced before I do anything else and um, see if we can get that 15 volts down to 15 volts as it should be. Now, unfortunately, because of uh, lack of supplies again, I've got to use two Zenas and um, one of them is 6.8 volts, the other one is 5.1. That should give us 11.9. So I think we're good. Now, as I said before, that board is fairly accessible from underneath. So when I get a 12 volt Zener, I can simply replace it. So that's going to go in and we'll test it again. Okay, Zener is replaced. Look at that. 14.94. Well, that's as close to 15 as we're going to get. So that's done. I think we'll see what happens when we plug in that uh, IF board at the end there, which is where I believe maybe a short exists. Well, I'm going to switch off now because that's perfect. As far as we're concerned, that little guy there can change colors. It goes to green. Much better. Much, much better. So, next stage. The power amplifier. This guy over here. Now, the power amplifier, I have no idea if it works, but um, the voltages seem to be okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject the signal in here and in here. And we're actually going to connect a set of speakers. Select speaker 1 and see what we get we might get lucky. Now, bear in mind, I've done no recapping yet. I really just want to see if this works. But if this does work, then the recapping will simply be improvement. So um, this here is one mess of switching. I haven't really figured it out yet, but I will. Uh, but in the meantime, 
I'm going to do that. I'm going to eject uh, an audio tone at the input of the amplifier over there. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the socket. This point and that point goes in through a uh, plug onto the um, part of the, what is it, the rumble filters, the stereo select, mono select board, and it's got ground as well. So I'm going to remove that. I'm also not going to, I'll put both of them together, left and right channel, but I'm going to put them through a couple of capacitors. I've got these two caps here. The signal is going to come in the middle. There's ground, signal comes in the middle, goes through two, two capacitors, and this goes to left, this goes to right. These are those uh, 47 microfarad Muse caps. Nice caps, I even like the color. This is just so that we don't um, actually short them out. We could normally, you normally do that in a preamp. You can just put in one mono signal, short out the two inputs. But I don't want to do that because although this has got an isolation cap over here, it actually reads a number of millivolts over there. Now, I suppose I, because I'm removing the plug, I could do it. But I'm going to do it like this. I've, um, I'm going to feed in that signal. And we'll see if we get something on the output. Let me set it up. I've got the dim bulb on, maximum restriction. I've got the audio coming in here through those two caps to both channels. So we're just testing the power amplifier. I've got the speakers connected to the dummy load over there. And uh, the oscilloscope is monitoring the two. So, time to rock and roll. Let's see what happens. I've got a very small signal coming out of the signal generator, 5 millivolts. We'll see what we get on there. Nice. So far, nice. It's drawing 80 milliamps. The two signals seem to be quite equal. Let me put it up a bit more. 10 millivolts. There's a slight discrepancy between the two. Let me put this on dummy so we don't have to listen to it. And let's have a closer look at the scope. That's looking pretty good, but that's a very small signal. That's 20 millivolts. That's 100 millivolts. Let's see what 200 looks like. Oh, the dim bulb is starting to light up. It's drawing quite a bit more current. But I've got it on 200 millivolts. It's drawing 110 milliamps. I'm going to give it another bulb just so we don't get it into too much stress with the restriction. Now it's drawing 120 milliamps. This thing is looking good. Now there is a slight discrepancy between the two channels. If you see the yellow, uh, it's just slightly. It's just slightly smaller than the blue. So there isn't exactly the same gain on the two channels. Now that could be all sorts of things. It could be the biasing. It could be the idle current. It could be well, probably the capacitors. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm happy that this uh, section at least seems to be working. So what I'm going to do now is capacitors. And following the plan of uh, doing things in stages, I'm going to recap just the uh, power amp board. And the two or the four capacitors I still have not received are the four big ones. Those are on order, It'll probably be a couple more days, but we know this is working. So uh, those are going to stay in there for now. I'm going to replace all these. I think there's another one down there, one of those REO, ROE caps, Rotostein caps. Um, actually, before I do that, there's something I want to see. I want to see what the idle current is like as it stands. Yeah, let's do that. Now, I've... Um, I actually had this translated in Google Translate and it came out very, very well. 
It's not a problem. It says the quiescent current of the output stage is set to approximately 16 milliamps at room temperature of uh, 25 degrees at uh, 220 volts mains without signal and it's set with R708 and R608. Those are the two little trim pots over there. The current corresponds to approximately 15 millivolts across the two emitter resistors, R728 and 729, and R628 and 629, with this setting both channels must be in operation. So what are we talking about? We're talking about measuring between that point there and that point there. In other words, we're measuring between the collector of this uh, transistor, the output transistor, and the other collector. So those are quite convenient points to connect the multimeter to. Collector to collector, we've got two 0 0.47 uh, ohm resistors here, and you want 15 millivolts across that. And the adjustment is that trimmer pot, which I believe is that guy over there. And those are the trimmer pots that I've noticed have been replaced. So I don't really care what the, well, I do. I don't want it to be too high right now. But I don't really care what the absolute value of that idle current is right now. What I do care about is that we can adjust it with the trimmer. Make sure that the biasing circuit is working okay. So let's set that up. Okay, big brother's measuring the right channel. Little brother's measuring the left channel. I've got them connected uh, collector to collector. I don't really care whether it's positive or negative. I haven't really checked which way around I've put it. I just want to see less than 15 millivolts. I've got one bulb back on, full restriction, so let's go. Hmm, not bad. Not bad at all. Now, I just want to see if it can be altered. I want to reduce it slightly. That's the right channel. That's actually quite good. The pot is working very well. I'm going to leave it at 11. Let's see what this one's like. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Sorry, camera slipped there. But I'm leaving that one at 11. I'm leaving that one at 12. I just wanted to make sure that they weren't uh, extraordinarily high or something like that. And I know that the trimmers actually adjust the bias current, which is good. So that part's all right. So on with the recapping. Okay, recapping is done. There's not that many, actually. They looked a lot uh, more <laughs> when I first looked at it. Uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one in the middle. So nine caps. Um, I've put in, these were, the ones that were there were 40 volts. I've put in 63 volts just to give it a bit more leeway. And I've cleaned the board. So all that's left is to replace the big guys when I get them. Time to test it. We'll start off with 20 millivolts RMS, very low. I've got the dim bulb on, one bulb only. Let's hit it. Okay. Okay, let's give it two bulbs. And now I'm going to increase the voltage. There's 100 millivolts. 200. 300. What we're getting there is about 10 volts peak to peak. It's not that much, but the dim bulbs are starting to light up a bit. So I better give them some more. I'm putting all four bulbs on and let's see 300, 400. 500, 600, 600. This is going well.
And those two channels look identical to me. This is literally one on top of the other. Well, I'm happy. I'm really happy. So the amp is working. We're just going to check the uh, bias current now. Adjust that. And we could probably call that section done for now. Okay. Let's see what we get. We want 15 millivolts. Let, let it settle for a while. You should actually let it settle for quite a while. Okay. Goes up a bit, comes down a bit. Let's do this one. And of course, it'll adjust somewhat. This is very touchy. They should have put 10 turn pots on here. Anyway, under 15. I'll probably adjust it again at the end, but uh, that's good enough for now. And that means that the power amplifier is done. So now I'm going to go back uh, through the uh, selector circuit, the preamp circuit, and um, do some recapping. Because what I want to do is to be able to do the recapping on the entire path from the uh, audio in to the amplifier where we are now. And there seems to be quite a few caps on there. Uh, the um, the photo input, I believe, has an RIAA equalization stage. So yeah, it should be interesting. But anyway, next stage is the preamp. I'll leave you there for now. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Stay safe.